Let's try now. Is it better? Yeah, now I can hear you. Great. Um, actually, this question I wrote before I saw the replay from, from the last call. And then I saw it and I was like, I don't know if this is going to be relevant, but from like everything we're talking today, I think I think it is. There's still a bit of judgment in my question, but <laughs> that's good. Yeah. Um, yeah. I I will read it because I yeah I think it's it would be much quicker. So the question is, uh, how do you inspire slash get people to care about making changes that don't directly benefit them? This question has bothered me for a long time. Uh, I remember going to university, studying psychology, and expecting to be surrounded by people who cared. Um, we were the first year of a new educational program in Europe called Bologna, and my university had added some strange and fair rules, which I won't get into uh, right now. I talked to my some of my classmates, not everybody, but they mostly found it outrageous. And I said, OK, I will write a letter to the university to try to push for changes against these policies. Uh, if I write it, will you sign it? And a lot of people said yes, um, but when it came time to act, they didn't want to be bothered because the changes would only benefit future students, not us. So I was quite furious about it. Uh, I told some of them that if every generation made changes that they wouldn't directly benefit from, our experience would have, have been would have been much better too. Um, like, why not break the cycle now? I even spoke to a teacher, sensing that she would understand, and she said. Yes, I've been trying to do a lot of things here for my students, but even they won't take a stand, which is surprising because there's always this idea, I think, like in general, that students are like really like to make changes, right? Um, so I understand that we are that we've been conditioned to be like deeply, deeply transactional. If I do something, I want a direct benefit from it. Um, so this story was 12 years ago, and even though I feel like I've grown a lot since then, I still feel this lingering frustration and recently I faced a situation that brought this pattern up again and I, I want to speak up but I want to do it more effectively like than the last time um yeah. and I'm like giving myself some time to process it so yeah that's that's the question thank you Mara can you can you say the question right at the beginning again how do you mm -hmm. yes um how do you get people to get to care about making changes that don't directly benefit them Okay, I okay, good. So I would say uh, that you should only try to make people get people to make changes that do directly benefit them. However, people have a diluted view of what actually directly benefits them because the 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 dominant worldview that we live in holds the self to be much smaller than it really is. So according to the calculations of that small separate individual, changing the rules for the next generation, planting an apple tree that you drink that that people will eat from in 100 years, making changes in the world that will benefit future generations, that doesn't benefit this separate self, does it? But is that really who you are? See, if you carry the story that this action will not directly benefit you, you're going to be sacrificing for something else, then you're going to get opposition because people are like, mm -hmm. you know, you're going to be their enemy. It's like, I'm going to make you have less so someone else has more, you know, like you get defensive against that. Mm -hmm. But if you carry the knowledge that this is going to benefit you, it's and and even in direct ways that you're going to feel like you're going to feel really good. You go out and spend a day planting apple trees for, you know, your great grandchildren who you haven't even met yet, or maybe for somebody else's great grandchildren who you never will meet. Um, and you, you finish that day of work, you're going to feel good. Even if you even if nobody congratulates you for it. Even if nobody thanks you for it, you're going to feel good. You've actually done something for yourself. You're probably going to live longer. You're probably going to be healthier. You're going to be happier. So if you come to people in a spirit of generosity, in a spirit of, hey, I'm going to help you do something that's going to be really great for you, 
you know, and to hold that knowledge. You don't necessarily say that out loud, but that's the spirit that you bring. Then you're going to invoke that part of them that knows that that's true. You're going to be, or another mm -hmm. way to look at it is you're going to be speaking to their, to, to, to their idealism and the part of them that wants to do those things, not the part of them that feels that they only qualify as a good person and get approval if they do those things. If you bring any of that energy in, um, it's going to be a much harder battle. They're going to be defensive. Enough to overcome. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and you'll have to overcome those defenses. But if mm -hmm. you have the knowledge that, oh, I know you want to do this. It's like the, uh, the, um, the Gandhian land reformer in uh, uh, the 1940s and 50s in India. I always forget his name. Um, but, you know, he would, he would go to the most greedy, ruthless landlord, you know, who owned vast land and the peasants owned nothing. And he would, he would go to them and say, I have an idea. Why don't you give away one sixth of your land to the, to the peasants? And they'd be like, why do you think I would do that? That's not, I, I, you know, there's nothing in it for me. And he would, but he would know that they, like he would hold the part of them that wants to do that. That he would say, because you're so generous. No one had ever called them generous before. And it wasn't a psychological trick. That's the key. Mm -hmm. His his seeing was so generous. He could see the beautiful part of them that would do that. And 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 he would he would just love them, you know, because he knew that they were going to do that, and they did. You know, millions of hectares were 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 redistributed to landless peasants because of this man's work. And it was about how and the reason he was so powerful. He didn't guilt them into it. He just saw them for who they really, for who they really were, or who they wanted to be, what was ready to come mm -hmm. out in them. And so, if you carry that spirit with you, and you know, like you find the part of yourself that knows that this is for their direct benefit, that this is how to live a good life, that this is how to be happy. And it's not about duty. It's not about mm -hmm. virtue. Then you will be very powerful. Well, thank you. Actually, um, this last days with the topic that you brought up today, um, I was thinking about this specifically that everybody has this views on Trump. And maybe also because um, Bobby is there with him, maybe he sees that he does care about things and he's thinking about his legacy. Maybe him seeing Trump with his generous eyes will also like bring the best out of him in this generosity. It's a theory. <laughs> Who knows? It's a possibility. But, uh, you know, it's a possibility. It's, a possibility. it's an invitation. Um, mm -hmm. And the landowner can say no. It's not a force. Totally. And say no, but it's an invitation. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. That's great.